much does something like that cost to set up? Well, uh, that's, uh, that, that, that's a, a variable figure. I think my, uh, in my bill, I think that cost a, a few million dollars to get it set up to begin with. Uh, there would be ways of offsetting that. And in fact, the federal government has said they're going to come in and, and, and pay uh, the vast majority sure, yeah, of that. I think, that's Chairman, correct. that's about 90% or plus. 90% or plus of, of that. Yeah. It really wasn't that way, but everyone said, you know, this is going to be costly. I, I support. Uh, the way that Chairman Zerwas has put together his exchange and the public-private partnership as a part of it. But again, this is about markets, uh, and, and that's extremely important that the public but sector be involved, but the private sector most particularly, particularly employers and small businesses be involved in these discussions and how this works. We've been trying to get a small business insurance plan to work in this state since I got to the legislature <laughs> in 1993, and I can tell you we haven't <laughs> succeeded yet. So that would be a great thing if we could, if this could help just figure that, that out. Just, just that, that, that itself, itself would be a great thing. Yeah, yeah. that would be great. Yeah. You know, Texas, Texas is a state of small businesses. I mean, that's we think of some giants that certainly – uh, you know, headquarter in this state, but Texas is a is a is a state that is composed really of small businesses. It's what we thrive on, and this is something that consistently small business has said we need some help with. And the exchange, in fact, the exchange that was created in Utah, of which we have borrowed some of those lessons, was put together before health care reform ever even passed, and it was primarily put together to address their small business needs in terms of acquiring health insurance for their employees. And so that's something that in and of itself, even if health care reform hadn't occurred, I would say today that an exchange would be a valuable thing for the small businesses in the state of Texas. Testing the water, do you feel like this is something that could pass the House? Oh, pass the House, yes. I, I think it could. Uh, you know, the, the, the bill that, that, that I've uh, His authored. Bill, uh, my bill and, won't. And, and, and let His me say that Chair Coleman, Chair Coleman is a joint author on my yes, bill. Yes, I am. So, uh, so I'm on we talk bill. about that. We, we, we talk about this together. Uh, it got a great hearing in, in the uh, House Committee on Insurance, uh, very well supported by all the stakeholders involved, and it, and it is sitting pending right now. Um, the governor's office has given us a sense that, that it, it, it probably won't uh, get out of their office, and so that then creates a sense of, okay, how, how far do you push this thing if there's a if you're pretty certain that the governor's office isn't in support of it. Right. So, so it has kind of gone to a point where um, the insurance company, uh, the insurance uh, committee is there. They're ready to act on it uh, if it's a circumstances look like it can get some legs and so forth. Uh, but at the end of the day, if it's not going to get through the governor's office, then we have to have, you know, some sense of, well, why should we put members in, in a position to have to take votes on something that, that they know is going to stall out when it gets to the executive office? Are there any other options beyond the governor? Well, there are. Um, in, in what sense are you referring to? Do you uh, feel like this is going to be something you have to bring up next time, or could it be something well, that you try to, I guess, get I, past him? Uh, well, you know, I, I think the I think it's something that's uh, will be a bright enough blip on the radar screen for them that it, it, it's something that you know if they're politically they're concerned that it's not the right thing for for the state then then it won't go anywhere. Um, but if we wanted to come back in, in a special session or something like that, uh, you know, we've done the work, we've researched it, uh, we think that we could get the membership comfortable with it in pretty short order. And we could get it in. We could get it in place. And then the other part is circumstances change. Uh, you know, a month ago we weren't going to use the rainy day fund at all. On on Thursday we'll pass a bill that uses three, four, three point four, three point one billion, three point one billion of the rainy day fund. So things progress and evolve. And I think that's in fairness to to the governor's office. Uh, you know, they're very candid and clear with me yes, as to what their concerns with it, and that's the way they always are, and I'm very appreciative and respectful of that. Uh, but as Chairman Coleman has said, you know, th this is a process of which there's several weeks left to go, and it's not just the budget, but it's a process that's going to entail the thousands of pieces of legislation that have been filed and so forth. The exchange bills are just one of those things, and so uh, as time progresses and um, you know, I know that the governor is going to be very tuned into health care reform and what the different aspects of it are. And, uh, you know, we'll revisit it periodically and, and make sure that we're going down the right course. If something like this does work out, how soon could Texans start utilizing a service like this? 
Well, we would, uh, in our bill, it, 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 we would probably expect that we would test this thing in 2012. Um, 2013, the Secretary of Health and Human Services in, in, in Washington, D.C. has to certify the exchange. So we felt it was important to have something that had already been beta tested out there and had proven itself before the, the Secretary came and wanted to put her blessing upon it. So um, really, we, we would probably need to have something, you know, be created during this session or very early thereafter tested in 12 so there would be a group of people that we could perhaps test it on to make sure that it works the way it's envisioned to work and tweak it and things like that um, and then just continue to refine it during 2013 and in 2014 of course that's that's when the the real impetus of health care reform kicks in and that's where you need to have that exchange in place I want to ask you about something that a lot of people have been talking about recently the Senate's uh, plan for health and human services doesn't save a program that provides uh, meds for low-income HIV patients. What is your take on this? Well, first of all, that's a problem. And it's a problem because people have to have their medications. So far, if there's someone who just has HIV or and, then, uh, and they're on medication, and sometimes it gets to the point where the virus isn't even detectable. So it doesn't allow people to get to full-blown AIDS where you know, they, they're going to die. Uh, so we have to find a way to restore that. I have an idea, uh, and uh, it's an idea that I have that about a, a waiver that can help with that, uh, that can leave some of the need for funding. Uh, we've used federal funds and moved people who are poor that might qualify for Medicaid into that program where they actually can purchase their drugs under Medicaid and we'll spend actually less state money doing that. Uh, and so it's an idea. You know, we have to run it up the flagpole, but it's an idea. And I, I, I would agree with that. And I, I think what you just heard from Chairman Coleman is, a, is, is kind of the, the way a veteran thinks around these things and stuff. And th this is a cost-effective program. You know, if you look at the cost of the medications, that are, are uh, utilized under the Medicaid program, we get them at a substantial discount. Um, and also, if you, again, it kind of goes back to the mental health issue. If you don't treat people uh, with these very effective medications, in fact, they're going to engage the healthcare system in a place that's going to be much more costly, um, and that's what you're trying to prevent. Now, that doesn't even speak to the quality of life. I mean, the quality of life that these individuals are going to live is obviously going to be substantially better than otherwise. And so, but if you just looked at the dollars and cents of it and what the ripple effect is of not trying to continue this program, um, then the economics make a lot of sense as to why we need to try to continue this. But as Chairman Coleman said early in this interview, um, you know, there just isn't enough money out there right now for us to do everything for everybody. But with that, that is also the kind of thing that forces us to think a little bit outside of the box and try to come up with innovative ideas to help accomplish the same goals that we probably wouldn't think about when we're not in the circumstances exactly that we right. are. Exactly yeah. right. So I've put my thinking cap on uh, and tried to think of things that I hadn't thought of really in a long time. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I, I think I, my, my brain is open enough to remember <laughs> some of the tricks I used to do. <laughs>